beer, it's good for you. Hello and welcome to the video. Within this video we'll be looking at easy ways to calculate water volumes for all grain brewing without the need for software. Getting this right will help you hit your target gravity, avoid a stop mash and end up with a better beer. I promise that I'll keep it simple, I'll walk you through the easiest ways to calculate and I will also explain it all so that you have a clear understanding of the importance of brewing water types and how they are used. So let's get started. There are essentially two types of water needed for a beer brew. The first is your strike water, also known as mash water. This first water will enter your brewing system and it is then heated before you add your grains for mashing. Getting strike water right and hitting your mash temperature accurately helps ensure proper sugar conversion, good efficiency and predictable fermentation and end beer flavour. Secondly we have sparge water. Sparge water is usually but not essentially preheated water used to rinse the grain bed. This water is used after the mash to extract additional sugars from the grain. By maximising your extraction you're also allowing your efficiency to be more predictable. Sparge water also allows us to top up the volume so that the desired volume of water is present throughout the brew so that we can be true to our recipe. Many, myself included, also feel that the sparge process plays an important role in the better all-round taste to a beer, especially one that is more forward compared to a beer that has not had the benefit of a sparge. Let's now look at the total amount of water you'll need for your brews with the basic formula that I present on screen now. So you can see that we simply add strike water and sparge water together as well as account for system losses. For many the hardest part is to figure out their brewing system or setup's losses, so let's look at this first. There are four main types of losses to account for as follows. The first is dead space. This is liquid trapped under the forced bottom or basket that will not be transferred. Next we have grain absorption. This is water that will be soaked up by the grain bill. There is also what is known as boil off, which essentially is water loss via steam during the boiling process. Then finally we have post boil losses. This comprises of brewing waste, also known as trub, which is mostly made up of coagulated proteins, polyphenols, tannins and hot matter. It's essentially the sludge left at the bottom of your brewing system after a brew. In addition to these factors you also have fluid stuck in your chiller or pump lines. Let's now look at summaries of what you can expect averagely with two examples of popular brewing systems using European power supplies. First up we have the Grainfather G30. This summary is based on a typical grain bill size and volume for this system which you will find at the bottom. Going from the top now, dead space, boil off, post boil losses are also very typical for an all-in-one brewing system of this size. You can see that the grain absorption of 0.8 to 1 litre per kilo of grain or 0.1 to 0.125 gallons per pound. This is one aspect that will not change from system to system, so use this no matter what you are using to brew with. Let's now look at a larger brewing system that is capable of brewing more than twice the G30's batch size. Here are some example details from the Gen 4 Brasilla 65 litre system. At the bottom you can see that these numbers are based on a large brew. Now moving from the top this Brasilla has the exact same dead space as the G30. The boil off though is higher because this system generates much more power which is needed to bring your brew up to temperature with a larger batch volume. With much more liquid to heat, this can be adjusted though as the system is also capable of small batch sizes. The grain absorption is the same as mentioned previously, this is generic. The total losses shown here are pretty streamlined though for a system of this size when being used for a larger batch and this is thanks to the brewing system's design which focuses on minimising losses. The numbers I just shared for those two very different brewing systems are averages that work as a good starting point for those systems. However, losses will vary according to situation as there are various factors involved that can have an impact. This can be your country's electrical voltage, environmental conditions or a case of how long you choose to boil for. What you will need to do though is track your own losses over a few brews and adjust your totals over time for better accuracy. However, one very good tip to get you started though is that the easiest way to start with is to sparge up to the volume that you wish in total and then as you're getting closer to the end of your boil you can then do a top up to keep the volume right. As you can now see I have provided details on screen in both metric and imperial with three different mash types. 
The thicker mash is mostly suited to a fuller bodied beer or traditional decoction mashes, but it is not very commonly used this day. This is mostly because it's not as efficient as the other mash types and is likely to need a longer mashing time for the right results. The balanced mash shown here in the middle is the most commonly used these days, but the thinner mash is popular with many too. Personally, I prefer a thinner mash generally as this can help with obtaining better conversion as well as a more even temperature distribution. I also like that the mash is easier to stir making it easier to avoid those dough balls. But of course the choice is yours. I suggest experimenting with the balance and thinner mash types and seeing which you prefer. Let's now run through how this is used in an example with the thinner mash. So say you're brewing 5 kilos of grain, multiply that by 3.3 litres and you're using 16.5 litres of mash water. For imperial brewers, say you're using 11 pounds of malt, then you will multiply this by 1.5 and then you will have 16.5 quarts of mash water. Easy stuff, for sure. Now let's look at the sparge water. This replaces your losses as discussed earlier and here is a simple calculation. Sparge water equals total water minus strike water minus losses. You may remember earlier that we said that our total water is made up of strike water plus sparge water plus system losses. So firstly in metric, if your total volume needed is 32 litres and you've already used 13.5 litres for your mash and your system losses are 3 litres, then you can see here in the calculation below that you will need 15.5 litres of sparge water. Let's now take the same thing in Imperial. So if your total water needed is 8.5 gallons and you've already used 3.5 gallons for the mash and your system losses are 0.8 gallons, then you're going to need 4.2 gallons of sparge water. So there you have it. This guide allows you to make all the calculations you need without the need for software. Even if you do use software, then I do believe that it is good for all brewers to know what is involved here anyway. However, it has to be said that the use of software does make such calculations automatic once you have added your recipe into the calculator, and if you use the recipes of others, mine included, then the process is even faster of course. Now if you do decide to look at brewing software, then personally I would very much highly recommend Brewfarber. Brewfarber is the highest regarded brewing software by many brewers these days because it's modern, intuitive and packed with powerful features that appeal to both beginners and experienced brewers alike. It offers cloud syncing across devices, real-time recipe building and automatic calculations for water volumes as well as a lot more besides like mash pH, mash efficiency as well as fermentation. I totally switched over to Brewfarver myself some years ago and love that it offers support across all the different brewing equipment that I use with the ability to create custom equipment profiles so that everything can be just the way you want it. I have various guides to Brewfarver on my channel which have been very highly watched and appreciated by the community so why not consider giving them a look now to see how that all works. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing. For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!